Hello, and welcome to Unit 5 of the ITIL 2011 Foundation Certification Course offered by Simply Learn. This unit includes three lessons and provides an overview to the service operations lifecycle phase of IT service management. This will help in effective functioning of components that support IT services. Let us move on to the first lesson, Introduction to Service Operations, in the next screen. This lesson provides an introduction to service operations. Let us look at the objectives of this lesson in the next screen. After completing this lesson, you will be able to Describe the purpose, objective, and scope of service operations phase. List the principles of communication. Explain events, alerts, and incidents. In the next screen, we will discuss the purpose, objective, and scope of service operations. Service operations lifecycle phase is responsible for executing processes that optimize the cost and quality of services to the required standard. It is also responsible for supporting the business to meet its objectives. Click each tab to understand the purpose, objective, and scope of service operations. Service operations has various purposes. It coordinates and carries out activities and processes. It delivers and manages services at agreed levels to meet business users' and customers' requirements. It also manages technology that is used to deliver and support services. The primary objectives of service operations are to maintain business satisfaction, deliver effective and efficient IT services, reduce the impact of service outage, and safeguard IT services access for only authorized users. Service operations provide guidance in following areas. Services, service management processes, technology, and people. Services are all activities that form part of a service and are included in service operation. The service provider, an external supplier, or the user or customer of that service can perform them. Service management processes are ongoing management and execution processes that are performed in service operation. All services need some form of technology for their delivery. Handling this technology is an integral part of the management services themselves. People manage all processes and technology and drive the demand for the organization's services and products. Good communication is a part of every organization. Often issues between business partners, clients, and customers are mitigated or avoided with the help of good communication. An important principle of communication is that it must have an intended purpose or a resultant action. Moreover, it should not take place unless there is a clear audience and they take part in it actively. In the next screen, let us discuss the types of communication that are typical to service operations. Some types of communication are typical to service operations. They are routine operational communication, communication between shifts, performance reporting and training on new or customized processes and service designs. Routine operational communication includes incident tickets resolved on time and communication between service desk and users or technical teams. Communication between shifts includes the shift handover reports. Performance reporting is the communication related to emergencies like outage or service downtime notifications to users and customers. Training on new or customized processes and service designs is another form of communication related to service operation. In the next screen, let us discuss the types of events. Event can be defined as any change of state of a CI or component of the service that is relevant to the delivery of the service. Events are typically notifications created by an IT service, configuration item or CI, or a monitoring tool. Events can be classified into three types, informational, warning, and exceptional. Informational events are ones that indicate a normal operation, example, a user logged on to use an application. Warning events are those which signal an unusual but not exceptional operation. It provides an indication that the situation requires a little more supervision. Example, Utilization of a server's memory reaches within 5% of its highest acceptable level. Exceptional events are those which indicate an abnormal operation. 
Example, a user tries to log on to an application with an incorrect password. In the next screen, let us discuss alerts and events. Events can be classified into alerts and incidents. An alert is a warning that a failure has occurred. Often alerts are created and managed by system management tools. The event management process manages them. The objective of an alert is to notify the concerned stakeholders so that an action is taken to correct the situation. For example, when you log in to a bank's website or perform a transaction there, you receive an email alert. An incident, on the other hand, is an unplanned interruption of an IT service or a reduction in the quality of an IT service. It could be a failure of an IT component that has not yet affected the service, but can disrupt the service if left unchecked. This can be raised by IT support teams. Incidents are managed by incident management process. For example, failure of a server in a clustered mode. It should be noted that all alerts are events, but not all events trigger alerts. All incidents are events, but not all events are incidents. In the next screen, let us discuss what are problems and workarounds. The process of managing problems and solutions to the problems is called problem management. In the context of ITIL, problem is the cause of one or more incidents or potential incidents. The cause may not be known at the time of occurrence of the incident. Problems are classified and categorized as incidents. They are documented in problem records. A workaround is a temporary way to restore service failures to an operational level. Example, rebooting a server. We might not know why the server failed, but if we reboot the server, the service will be up. Workarounds are used for reducing or eliminating the impact of an incident or problem for which a full resolution is not yet available. Workarounds for incidents that do not have associated problem records are documented in the incident record and workarounds for problems are documented in known error records. Incident or problem records are created in the service management tool. In the next screen, let us discuss what is a known error and a known error database. Once we have a problem on our hands, based on the priority, effort is spent to find out the root cause of an issue. A temporary fix or a workaround might be used to restore services to a usable level for the time being. The moment a workaround or a root cause to the problem is found, it is called a known error. The IT services are aware of the issue. Known errors are managed throughout their life cycle by problem management process. Development teams or suppliers may also identify known errors. For example, application incompatibility reports for Windows by Microsoft. A database is created for known errors, workarounds, and their solutions. This database is called Known Error Database, or KEDB. The database gives the exact details of the fault and the symptoms. In the next screen, we will discuss impact, urgency, and priority. Priority, in simple words, means the relative importance of an incident, problem, or change. It is used to identify required times for actions to be taken. For example, the SLA, or Service Level Agreement, may state that priority to incidents must be resolved within 12 hours. Priority is calculated based on the impact and urgency of the issue. Here, Impact is the measure of effect the issue has on the business processes of IT service support and urgency is how soon the issue can be handled. Priority equals impact plus urgency. Let us summarize what we have learnt in this lesson. The purpose of service operations is to coordinate and carry out activities and processes. Any communication must have an intended purpose or a resultant action. It should include active participation of the audience. There are three types of events, informational, exceptional, and warning. The process of managing problems and their workarounds is called problem management. Next, we will focus on the second lesson, service operations processes.